That's the first time we look at the matrix of size 4. It's a big matrix. It's a 4 times 4 matrix, and we need to find the determinant of that. That's the one. If you still copy that, I'll just I'll give you some time. 1, negative 1, 0, 3. Now, if you if you approach this matrix in the, with the direct way we do we did determinants before, I have to choose a row, I have to choose a column, so I'll call the matrix A here. Uh, I have to choose a row or a column, and I have to do the row or column decomposition. Canonically, the way we did determinants last time, that's how I should do this. And actually, I did that. I did that. I don't have to. I, I don't require you to copy that. It's, this will be lots of numbers. You can watch this because we eventually we compute it differently. We compute it with the row echelon form. But I did that. You can just check if I did everything correctly. So I chose out of the first row, a first okay, uh, out of the rows of this matrix and the columns of this matrix. If you have to do this directly with the row decomposition or column decomposition, which row or column will you choose? First, because we have extra zero there, which will make computation a little bit shorter. So I'll choose my first row. And that's how, if I, if I do the decomposition, that's, that's, that's how it will be. Here it is. So it's a one times the remaining minor. This time the, the, we mine, uh, this time the minor we're looking at is the minor of size three times three. Here it is. Now goes the next element. This one, negative one. So we have here plus one because we alternate the signs. And then the remaining minor, it's very clear now. That's the first column of this minor. That's the other two columns of this minor. Here it is. Two, three, four, six, one, negative seven, negative one, seven, two. And finally, zero, we just skip the zero because zero just finish everything. So we go straight to the point three, which has sign negative. Remember, we alternate the signs. Plus here, negative here, plus here, negative here. And the, the minor associated with that is this minor. Here it is. And here it is. Now, if you go on in this way, you have to do the row decomposition for each of these minors individually. And you will have three terms here, three terms here, three terms here. So it's like a, it's like a tree. It just keeps, keeps multiplying, keeps multiplying. The higher, you go, the higher determinant you start with, the, high, the, the more branches of your tree you will have. It's not really that difficult, actually, after all. I mean, I remember when I was a student and we were doing determinants very often, the determinant 3 times 3, most of it you can do from the top of your head. I mean, like, a, after you practice a little bit, this crossing out rows and crossing out columns, it, there isn't much of the arithmetic there. So even computationally, even for testing these systems of linear equations, 3 times 3, quite acceptable. Well, rather than doing that, actually, we will, I will finish this later. I mean, finish this with the help of the software. But uh, we, can, we can actually save some time by doing one extra, one extra row reduction, actually three row reductions, because look at this, what I can do. If I take my matrix, it's the same matrix as here. Do I have a name for that? If I take my matrix, that's the same matrix. It just I just change the brackets from from the vertical one bars to the, to the parentheses. The same matrix. If I do three row reduction, so if I use this keyword, and if I vanish two, four, and three down here, you can do it without my help. But that's the result of that that vanishing. We can double check a few rows if you want. So for instance, here we we multiply the first row by negative. We multiply the first row by negative 2 and added it to the second one, right? So this vanished this. Uh, it's vanished this element because negative 1, negative 2 is 0. Uh, 6 stayed, negative 6, negative, negative 7. It works. So if I go now the first row with negative 4 and add to the third one, 0 here, 1, negative, it's 2. I agree with this value. 1 here. It's negative 12 and 7, negative 5. I think you can change the, you can check this, this row too. Uh, so by doing these three row reductions, we have now, we're looking now at the different metrics, at the different metrics. But because of the properties we just discussed with you one slide above, if I call this matrix B, I can tell you that the determinant of A, we after, is the same as the determinant of B. And so instead of looking at this matrix, I can look at this matrix. Now, when I look at this matrix, now I can do my row reduction. So when I do first row reduction, I obviously I will use, no, I said row reduction. I mean, like a row column decomposition, I should say. I will use column decomposition. Obviously, I will use the first column because it's only one element here in the first column, which is non zero. So if I cross out this row and this column, this will be the minor next to this one. Here it is. 
That's the minor. All of the other elements in the first column, look at this. All of them zeros. You can cross, of, of course, like if you can cross the row, you can cross the column. But it doesn't change much because all of these are zeros. So the whole determinant just ends up to be just this three times three. And for this one, for this one, now I will use row decomposition in the full in, in, in full generality. So I will use here, I think I was using here first row. So I have my negative six. Oops, there go. Here's my negative six. Negative, negative, because it's the we alternate the signs. There's a negative here. The associated smaller minor is this two. So here's this minor. Then I went to negative seven, so I went down this way. So I took this element and multiplied by this minor. And here's the result. I, you, you can, of course, go a little bit further with this matrix rather than going to the row decomposition or column decomposition, doing like another, another few row reductions, making it introducing even more zeros. But my, I personally that doesn't find this effective. I mean, like, because like I said, three times three determinants, after a bit of a practice, you can do row, row, row decomposition or column decomposition of the three times three very quickly. Just doing this mental crossing out the rows and seeing the smaller determinants. Because smaller one, it's very easy, right? You multiply across here and multiply across here. That's why normally I don't do row reductions for the three times three. For the four times four, yes, row reduction is, is useful. You see, we just introduce three extra zeros, which saves us lots of time. Now, if I finish this computation, I finish this here. This is six. This one is negative 14 plus 40. It's, uh, it's 26. Negative seven times here, we have negative 14. Negative 14, negative eight. It's negative 24, 22. And if I bring everything together, the result should be negative two. Yeah, any questions? We can, in principle, finish this direct computation too. For, for the sake of practice, you might try to do that. Uh, uh, I have like a, this piece of a software, actually, it, it can compute the determinants for me, helping me. So I can, I can use that, for instance, this determinant. If I ask the software how much, uh, what's the num num number for this, it will tell me the number is 123 here. This one, if I ask the software for this, the result, this one is 211. And this one is, what does it say? 112. Well, I wasn't I wasn't expecting this large number, so I can't I can't finish the whole the whole thing in my head. So if I have to take one of these plus one of these, I can do that probably. It's three hundred and thirty-four, and then I have to subtract three of these. Okay, let's check three hundred and thirty thirty-four, and I have to take away one uh, three of these, it's three hundred and thirty-six. Oh, I can do that in my head. <laughs> so it's negative two, yeah.